Coffee is the most consumed beverage in the world, with over 2.25 billion cups of coffee being consumed daily. But a significant fraction of that figure comprises of instant coffee, which grew increasingly popular in the last century. Now, while coffee has become as much of a beverage as an art form, with many complicated coffee-making machines being manufactured every day, some people would still instead opt for a quick and easy cup of instant coffee. If you're one of those people, have you ever wondered how instant coffee is made? Well, in this video, we'll get into the step-by-step -step process of how instant coffee is made. Coffee was first cultivated in the Ethiopian highlands when a farmer noticed his cattle were more active after they consumed the fruits of a certain plant. Ethiopians soon began cultivating this plant for its stimulating properties, and it would eventually become known as coffee. Before long, coffee had spread through the Arab culture and had become an integral part of daily life. Between the 16th and 17th centuries, wealthy European cities began adopting coffee as their preferred beverage for special occasions. As coffee grew in popularity all over the world, coffee shops became hubs for businessmen and white-collar workers. However, instant coffee wasn't a thing until 1890, when David Strang from New Zealand patented a new formula for making coffee using a dry, hot air process. In the 1900s, instant coffee became more popular, and by 1938, the Nescafe brand launched its instant coffee, which has become a staple in many households today. The making of instant coffee starts at the coffee plantations in countries like Brazil, Vietnam, Colombia, and Indonesia. Brazil is actually the largest exporter of coffee beans, as they export over 2.6 million metric tons of coffee beans yearly. The coffee trees, which take an average of three to four years to bear fruit, produce bright, deep red fruits called coffee cherry. The coffee cherries are picked either by hand and or mechanically, and then transported to the processing plants. Coffee cherries can be processed by simply spreading them out to sun dry. This is called the dry process. The cherries are raked and turned throughout the day and are covered at night to prevent spoiling. This process takes at least several weeks, during which the moisture content in the cherries is reduced to 11%. Alternatively, the cherries can be processed using the wet method. This involves removing the pulp from the cherries after harvesting, so the coffee beans are dried with only the parchment skin on. The pulp is removed by sending the coffee beans through a series of water channels that also separate them by size. The beans are then transported to large, water-filled fermentation tanks, where they're left to ferment for 12 to 48 hours. You know fermentation's complete when the beans feel rough to the touch. The beans are then rinsed off and sent off for sun drying till the moisture content drops to 11%. The dried beans, now called parchment coffee, are sent to the milling station for further processing. At the milling station, the parchment coffee is placed in a hauling machinery that removes the parchment layer or endocarp from wet processed coffee. The next step, known as polishing, is optional. It involves removing any leftover skin from the hauling process by a machine. Polished beans are considered superior to unpolished ones, but in reality there really isn't any difference between both. Anyway, the polished or unpolished beans must be graded and sorted by size and weight. Coffee beans are typically sized by sending them through a series of screens that grade them on a special size scale of 10 to 20. The beans are sorted by weight using an air jet to separate heavy from light beans. The beans are also reviewed for flaws in their shape or coloring and checked for over-fermentation, insect damage, or unhauled beans. Any bean that doesn't meet the standards is removed by hand or machinery so that only beans of the finest quality are exported. Milled beans, also known as green coffee, are placed in jute or sisal bags and stored in warehouses until they're ready for export via ships. However, before being exported, the beans must be tested for quality and taste. This is done in a process known as cupping. The taster, usually called the cupper, evaluates the beans for their overall visual quality. Next, the cupper roasts a small portion of the beans, grinds them and infuses them in boiling water. They then carefully nose the brew to examine its aroma. The cupper then lets the coffee rest for a while before spooning a portion into their mouth to examine its taste. The cupper repeats this with samples from samples from different batches to ensure all the coffee beans being exported are up to standard. This intense testing is essential not just for quality assurance, but also to determine which types of coffee beans can be blended to achieve the perfect roast. 
Expert cuppers can taste hundreds of samples of coffee daily and still be able to detect even slight differences between them. The coffee beans are stored in a huge silo at the coffee factories, from where they're filtered down into large ovens for roasting. Roasting transforms green beans into the aromatic brown beans we get at our favorite stores or cafes. The beans are roasted at about 550 degrees Fahrenheit and are constantly stirred to prevent them from burning. When the beans reach an internal temperature of about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, they begin to turn brown and release caffeol, a fragrant oil locked inside the beans. This is called pyrolysis. After roasting, the beans are left to cool by air. At this point, the coffee beans can be sent to the various cafes or coffee stores. But for instant coffee, the coffee beans move to the next stage, grinding. The grinding is done in an industrial mill that grounds the beans until they become a coarse powder. This powder is transferred to a huge machine that uses hot steam and pressure to force out that delicious coffee aroma. The coffee powder is then heated in a high-power industrial oven until condensed into an extract and spread onto a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt moves the extract to the freezing hall, which runs at temperatures as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius. Factory workers have to protect themselves in thermal clothes while working in the freezing hall so they don't get frostbite. The freezing hall is essential. Because to lock in the coffee's aromas, it must be frozen, at least as cold as minus 40 degrees Celsius. The frozen coffee is not broken up into granules, which contain a significant amount of moisture that must be extracted. To get rid of the moisture, the granules are stacked up on trays and driven through a low-pressure tube for at least five hours. This works by heating the granules at 60 degrees Celsius in a strong vacuum. Under pressure, the frozen water contained in the granules evaporates and turns directly into steam in a process called sublimation. When this process is done, the coffee granules are ready to be packaged. But before they're packaged, they must undergo rigorous testing to ensure they meet health standards. Coffee must not only be safe to consume, but it must also be of good quality in terms of taste, color, and smell. All these factors are tested before the coffee can be sent out of the factory. At the packing station, machines pour a specified amount of coffee into jars or sachets depending on the manufacturer's preferred style. The coffee jars or sachets are sealed airtight and a barcode is affixed. They're then stacked into cardboard boxes and distributed to stores or cafes. An important thing to know is that instant coffee has less caffeine than brewed coffee. A study showed that instant coffee has an average caffeine content of 66 mg per cup, while drip or filter coffee has an average caffeine content of 112 mg per cup. The reason for this is simple. Instant coffee is highly susceptible to volatile oxidation and flavor release, so manufacturers often have to reduce its concentration as much as possible while maintaining a reasonable amount of caffeine. This increases the coffee's shelf life and makes it less likely to end up caking due to exposure to moisture. So, now you know how coffee is made from the moment the plant is harvested to the moment it's delivered to your favorite shops. Do you enjoy drinking instant coffee? How many cups of instant coffee do you consume daily? Let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more content like this.